Hi, my name is Aida Akila and I will introduce to you about South Africa and their population. South Africa is the southernmost country on the African continent bordered by northern neighbors Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. South Africa occupies 4% of the continent's total landmass covering an area of 1,221,040 square kilometers and home to many large cities all of which are known for their beauty and rich cultural diversity. South Africa is five times larger than Great Britain and three times the size of Texas. The current population of South Africa is 59,201,789 as of Monday, May 11, 2020, based on World Meter elaboration on the latest United Nations data. South Africa 2020 population is estimated at 59,308,690 people at mid-year according to UN data. South Africa population is equivalent to 0.76% of the total world population. South Africa ranks number 25 in the list of country by population. The median age in South Africa is 27.6 years. That's all from me. Thank you. Now, my friends Anish Shafika will tell you about circular flow of income. Don't rush, slow touch, run away. Hello, I'm Anis. Now, I will continue about the circular flow of income in two sector, three sector, and four sector economy. But before that, I will introduce the components of macroeconomics. There are four components of macroeconomics. First, household is on all the factors of production like labor, land, and capital. Second, firms is a private organization that needs the input from the household and will provide the outputs to the household. Third, governments will collect the tax from the household and firms. And lastly, foreign sector, where it involves the import and export, which cause the inflows and outflows in the circular flow of household, firms, and governments. So, we will go through to the circular flow of income. The circular flow of income is a model that demonstrates how money moves through the society. For example, money flow from the firms to the household as a payment of salary and flows back to the firms as a payment of goods and service. Now, let's move on to the circular flow of income in two sector economy, which is known as a simple economy. In this sector, it involves household and firms. In this flow, household will provide their factor service to the firms and they will receive the salary in returns. At the same time, household will spend their income on goods and service and in exchange, firms will provide it to them. For example, there is a firm running a business of producing masks. So, household will provide the factor of production which is labor to the firms. So, in exchange, household will receive their salary in returns. Next, Let's continue to the circular flow of income in three sector economy. It is also known as closed economy. There is a little difference between this sector and two sector economy where it involves the government sector. The flow of income remains the same flow with two sector economy where the household must provide the factor service to the firms. But it's shown the difference where household as a labor he need to pay the labor tax to the government. So in exchange, household will receive the transfer payment from the government. For the firms, when runs a business, he needs to pay the tax of goods and service and in exchange, the firms will receive the subsidies from the government. The government also purchase the goods and service from the firms and collect the tax from the household and firms. If the government's revenue less than its payment, so the government is deceiving. So, the governments need to increase their revenue more than its payment to occur the saving. So, that's all from me. Now, my friends, Shahada will continue about the concept of national income. Don't rush. Slow touch. Hi, I'm Run Shahada away. and I'm going to discuss with you guys the concept of national income. Gross domestic product is known as GDP. GDP is a total market value of all final goods and services produced by one country during one year. So, it means it is as good citizens of South Africa are working overseas. The annual GDP for South Africa is 350 billion USD. 
the GDP per capita is comparable. We can compare between years or between country. For example, for years, 2019, the GDP per capita for South Africa is 7,433. But for 2018, it is 7,373. For the country, for the Malaysia, GDP per capita for Malaysia is 11,433. Gross national product is known as GNP. GNP is a total market value of all finance goods and services produced by residents of the South Africa. So it means it's exclude foreign workers who are working in the South Africa. The annual GNP for 2019 in South Africa is 315 billion USD. Market price is the current price in the market through demand and supplies. It is the price paid by consumer. For example, market price for rice in 2019 is 14 USD. Factor cost is the price of output that value based on the factor production. So it means it excludes tax and subsidies. Net national product is a total market value of goods and services provided by one country during one year after deducting depreciations. So it means it's a value of goods and services over a period of time. Personal income is the income earned by the household before paying tax. The average income earned by household in South Africa is 2,075,000 USD per month. Disposable income is the, in the income that can be used by the household to consumption, expenditure, and personal savings. I'm going to end my discussion here. My friends Alia will discuss with you guys about the national income of Don't rush. Hi, I'm Alia. Now, we move to the two methods used by South Africa to calculate their GDP, which is in the product and expenditure approach. I will use the example for from quarter 4 of 2019 to show you about the GDP on product and expenditure approach. Okay, first, I will talk about the product approach of the GDP in South Africa. South Africa has a comparative advantage in the production of agriculture, mining and manufacturing products relating to these sectors. In general, real gross domestic product measured by production decreased by 1.4% in the fourth quarter of 2019 following a decrease of 0.8% in the third quarter of 2019. Now, I will explain about the contribution of sectors in Africa that affected the GDP of the country. The largest negative contributors to growth in GDP in the fourth quarter were the transport, storage and communication industry. The transport, storage and communication industry decreased by 7.2% and contributed negative 0.6 of a percentage point to GDP growth. Positive contributions to GDP growth came from the finance, real estate and business services industry. Next, second, I will talk about expenditure approach. As we know, expenditure approach measures national income by looking at the GDP at the perspective of total spending on the final goods and services. For expenditure approach of GDP in South Africa, expenditure on real good, real gross domestic product decreased by 1.2% in the fourth quarter of 2019 following a decrease of 0.4% in the third quarter of 2019. Now, I will explain about the flow of the expenditure in South Africa that affected the GDP of that country. So, this is the diagram. Household finance consumption expenditure increased by 1.4% in the fourth quarter of 2019, contributing 0.8 of a percentage point to total growth. Government finance consumption expenditure decreased by 0.2%. Gross fixed capital formation decreased by 10%, contributing 2 percentage points. Changes in inventories in the fourth quarter contributed 3.3 negative percentage points in total growth. Exports increased by 2.3 percentage and imports decreased by 8.5 percent. Net export contributed 3.3 percentage points to total growth. Now, I will pass this to Asha for him to talk about the uses of national income. Don't rush, slow touch, run away. Uses of national income. National income measure the overall health of the economy. The use of national income analysis is for the economic term, which is to calculate per capita income, to compare standards of living in different countries, to measure the rate of growth for a country, and to estimate inflationary and deflationary pressure. National income is the most dependable indicator of a country's economic health. It is the difference between GDP and GNP which indicate the contribution of net income abroad. Lastly, it is necessary for economic planning, useful aids in judging certain sectors which should be more be emphasized. I am Ashraf and that's all from me.